Hey guys, my name is Sarah. I am a third year medical student and today I'm going to be talking about how I scored over 260 on step one. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and check out my other videos about second year and my third year clerkship. So in a nutshell, step one sucked. Nobody's going to tell you any different. Um, it was not a fun experience, but I made it through and apparently did so successfully. So I'm going to be sharing some tips with you guys for how I managed to prepare and do pretty well. So in my personal opinion, the biggest component to doing so well on step one was because I worked so hard leading up to step one in my classes. Um, first and second year of med school, I went through it knowing that I was going to have to know all of this for step one eventually. And using Anki was a really helpful method for that um, because I didn't suspend my clerks when I was done for them aside from like basic anatomy and stuff like that. But once I actually got into the organ systems, I didn't suspend anything. I just kept reviewing things for months and months all the way up until step one because I knew I'd need to know all those details anyway. I studied super hard using UWorld, Pathoma, Sketchy, First Aid, um, Boards and Beyond, a bunch of resources and I worked super hard <laughs> to try to get A's on all my exams because I knew that the more I know now the less I'll have to learn and dedicate it and that worked so well for me. I completed UWorld entirely before I even got to Dedicated. Um, I started using it in my first semester of med school and I highly recommend doing that. I um, started just doing like biochemistry questions for my like basic foundational science course um, and then with every organ system that we did, I did the UWorld questions for that system. Even if it was stuff we hadn't covered in class because I knew Again, I'm gonna have to know it eventually. I may as well learn it now, so that's less learning I have to do down the road. And so a couple months before Dedicated, I decided to just start doing as many UWorld questions as I could every day. Um, I think I ended up doing like just an extra 40 question block every day. Um, that way I knew that I could get through all of the rest of UWorld before I even started Dedicated. So people keep asking me how my UWorld percentages were so high during Dedicated, and that's it, <laughs> basically. Um, I had already gone through your world once and the other stuff I've already studied so hard during my preclinical years that I really didn't have to study as much during dedicated. I could just review the stuff I already knew. So let's talk about my actual dedicated schedule. I had no idea where to start when I was making a schedule, um, but I just kind of went for it. I just made a spreadsheet on Excel um, and I'm going to show you guys exactly what I did and it worked relatively well. So the one major downfall to my schedule was that I didn't incorporate Anki because I wasn't planning on really doing much Anki when I made my schedule. Um, I was going to keep up with my reviews that I had done in my preclinical classes um, and I was planning to make a deck for all the oral questions I got wrong which was super helpful and I highly recommend doing that. And what I ended up doing was learning all of the cards for the sketchy videos I was watching each day and that was a lot of cards. I ended up doing about 1200 cards a day and that took a couple of hours um, in addition to my schedule which was already 12 hours long and so I ended up getting very burnt out and doing Anki during my lunch breaks and dinner breaks and that just led to a lot of burnout. So here's the schedule I ended up making. Um, it just shows you every week, color-coded, what I did leading up to test day. Um, I did seven weeks of dedicated, which my test was on Thursday, so it ended up being kind of like eight weeks. Um, here's the general outline. I would start the day by doing 40 euro questions, just all subjects. Um, and then I would do content review for a couple of hours and in those hours I'd specifically do videos whether that was boards and beyond or sketchy mostly sketchy um I would take a break for lunch which ended up being just doing Anki basically um and then for the next three hours I would go through first aid and read and highlight the pages in first aid for that day and then I would do 40 year old questions based on just the subjects that I covered that day, um, so just the organ system that I did in first aid, 
and then I planned on going running and eating dinner that didn't exactly happen um, and then reviewing the things that I had gotten incorrect that day. Every week after the first couple of weeks, because the first week I was really just adjusting to my new schedule. Um, the second week we had a CBSE and so that was like my practice exam for the week. After that I did a practice test every week. Every Friday I would go to the library. Um, I started with your world self-assessment one, which I've heard is a great test to start off with. Um, it's a little bit easier. Um, and I recommend it. I feel like it, I got a 260 on it. So I feel like it was pretty accurate, honestly, from the beginning. Um, these are the NBMEs that I did. The last week I did the free 120 year old self-assessment two, which those two are recommended to save for right before you take step. Um, and then my final reviews leading up to test day. I used Cram Fighter to organize the content for my schedule. Um, Cram Fighter is a great website where you can put in all the resources you plan on using and it will create a schedule for you for what to study each day. I highly recommend Cram Fighter. I have a discount code in my bio. Click on the link to get 10% off your own subscription to Cram Fighter and organize your own study schedule. So after I used Cram Fighter to make my schedule, I put it all into the spreadsheet. Um, these are the pages in first aid that I did every day, color coded by system and you'll probably notice that I was spending several days doing basic biochemistry and microbiology and then later on I was doing entire organ systems in one day which was difficult but it was doable. So the next tab is sketchy videos. Um, again there's a lot in the beginning and it looks overwhelming but honestly each video is like 10 minutes. And so watching that on double speed is just five minutes of video. So you can do 10 videos in less than an hour. Um, so it was a lot more doable than I thought it would be. And then it gets more into the drugs. I only did sketchy micro and farm. I didn't do sketchy path. And I found sketchy to be super, super helpful, especially the microbiology. That was a lifesaver on step. Highly recommend it. I also did the Anki cards for each sketchy video that I did every day, which again, that ended up being a lot more work than I anticipated, but it was very helpful to really solidify all of those details because microbiology is a huge component of step one. Next is Pathoma. Um, you can see that Pathoma was not included on a lot of days in my schedule, but it was very, very helpful. Um, I had already been through Pathoma like twice in my preclinical classes, um, so I was already very familiar with a lot of the information, but here's just what I did based on the organ systems that I was covering in first aid for those days. This first aid was what I used as the basis for my whole schedule and kind of the outline for the systems I was doing each day, and then Cram Fighter filled in the associated sketchy videos, Pathoma, etc. For Boards and Beyond, I had already been through Boards and Beyond in my preclinical classes, and so I only watched a few videos. Um, I watched a lot of the biochemistry and immunology because I needed extra help there. And then I watched some of the like basic physiology for like cardiac physiology, renal, pulmonary, because those were things that I struggled in and really wanted to just get some extra help from those videos. The last tab is my scores for my practice tests. Um, you can see all of those here. Scoring over 260, that means that the most predictive practice tests for me were your old self-assessment 1 and NBME 18. Um, I got 260 and 265 on those. Everything else I scored lower, which kind of freaked me out. But <laughs> that was kind of what I used to track my progress. So for UWorld, I divided it up and knew that doing 80 questions a day would get me through all of UWorld a second time before I took steps. So I think doing 40 random questions in the morning and 40 targeted subject specific questions in the afternoon was a good way to divide up all those questions and get them all done. For each question that I got wrong, I would type out whatever I didn't know into OneNote and I would make an Anki card for it in a little step one deck that I made. Um, Writing it out in one note wasn't really helpful. I planned on just like reading over the notes at the end of the day and that didn't exactly happen because I was just so tired by the end of the day. But having that Anki deck really helped with solidifying the information I didn't know. This first day, this poor book has been through so much. I had already read through it and kind of underlined and took notes all through my preclinical classes. So it was full of notes and that was super, super helpful when it came time to actually start studying and dedicated. 
I know a lot of people don't like first aid because it doesn't have every detail you need to know, but I like having kind of a visual outline to organize everything that I need to know and a place to take notes during my classes so that when it came time to study, I had those notes in here and I was able to study everything all in one place. So in the very beginning, my schedule looked like this and this looks super overwhelming. But you have to remember each of those videos takes about five minutes to watch and so I could get it all done within those couple of hours. Um, so you can see where I did a couple of hours of just doing UWorld and reviewing it. Um, I did UWorld in the timed mode, not the tutor mode, so I would do the whole thing and then spend the next hour just reviewing it and making Anki cards for the things I didn't know. Um, then a couple of hours of watching sketchy videos for the day, take a little lunch break, spend three hours reading and highlighting in first aid. Um, as I was going through first aid, I also would have a piece of paper next to me and I would write down anything I did not know and I would add that to my Anki deck and I thought that was very helpful to just really get down all the little details I didn't know yet. Then I would do my U world based on things I had learned that day in first aid and then just spend the rest of the day reviewing things. Later on, you can see where my schedule started to get a little simpler. Um, I was watching just videos on drugs for the organ system that I was learning. Um, so I was spending less time doing sketchy videos and more time um, very intensely doing Anki and studying first aid for those systems. I think that one of the other major things that helped me was focusing on the things that I didn't know instead of just reviewing everything. Um, because there's a lot of things that you think you know and you read it and you're like, yeah, I'm familiar with that. But when you're tested on it, you don't know every single detail and that's where step really trips you up. And so something that was super helpful for me was making that step one deck on Anki. Um, even if you're not an Anki user, just please make flashcards. Do something so that you can really solidify the stuff that you don't know. So for me, that was every time I got a UWorld question wrong, every time that I got a UWorld question right, but I didn't really know it, um, I would put that information in a card. Anytime I came across something in first aid I didn't know, I would write it down as a piece of paper and then put that on a card. Just anything that I didn't know, I would make a flashcard of it and make myself learn it and make myself keep reviewing it over and over until test day. And that helped me so much filling in my knowledge gaps. The last day before my exam was a whirlwind. I was so burnt out. I was just ready for all of it to be over. I was planning on just kind of lightly reviewing the stuff that I didn't know and the notes that I took in that OneNote document and otherwise just taking the day off and resting and that did not happen. And I decided to skim through the entirety of first aid. That's a bad idea. Don't do that. I was so stressed trying to get through that book in one day and thinking, oh, I think I just, I need to read this one page more than just skimming it because what well, if there's a detail on there that I don't know and I'll get a question on it. And I was just completely overthinking things and working myself way too hard and don't do what I did. <laughs> Take the day before off. And I mean, maybe it helped. Maybe I did so well because I worked so hard studying all the way through first aid the day before the test, but I really don't recommend it. Don't stress yourself that much. So enough about my schedule. Let's talk about test day itself. The actual test day, I know a lot of people have been having issues with exams being canceled because of COVID. I was super fortunate in that that didn't happen. It was a very long day. It was like 7.30 in the morning to like 5 p.m. So the test itself is seven blocks of 40 questions. So that's like doing seven year old blocks back to back to back. It's exhausting. Um, you get one hour for each block. And honestly, one thing that surprised me was on my year world blocks and even my tests at school, I would get through 40 questions relatively quickly. 60 minutes was absolutely no problem for me. But then when I actually got to the real step one, the question stems were so much longer that it took me like almost every minute of those 60 minutes. So if you're someone who struggles with timing with your world blocks, definitely work on that before you get to actually taking step one because it will be harder when you actually take the test. So in addition to your seven blocks an hour each, you have 45 minutes of total break time that you can divide up however you want. And one thing I didn't know until test day 
is if you finish a block early, however much time you have left gets added onto your break time. So you finish a block 10 minutes early, you get 10 extra minutes of break time. So overall with the blocks that I finished early, I ended up with about an hour of break time that I divided up and I took a break after every single block, which I highly recommend. Some people try to do two or three blocks at once to just get it out of the way. I really liked doing a break after each block. I thought it just really helped me get in a better mindset and to kind of calm down and relax a little. So what I did for snacks, I had oranges and I already peeled them and broke up the little pieces and put them in a plastic bag and I also brought Cheez-Its. And so after each vlog I could go out and just eat like a couple orange slices and like a few Cheez-Its and just reseal the bag. And so I recommend having something like that where you can just like take a few bites after each block. One frustrating thing is every time you take a break, you do have to like empty out your pockets, you have to take off your glasses, you have to like push up your sleeves, pull up your pant legs, and like turn around and like it's this whole check-in process every single time you go back in the testing room. Um, so that's something that you really have to factor in when you're thinking about your timing. So all in all, dedicated sucks. Step one sucks, but it is doable. You will get through it. Um, it is a very, very hard few weeks, but they fly by and you'll get through it and you will know so much and you'll be very surprised the things that you remembered from your first couple years of med school. You will do better than you think. I came out of step one thinking I absolutely failed it. But if there's any just overarching advice I could give, just focus on the things you don't know, make those flashcards to fill in the gaps, um, stick to your schedule, don't try to change things unless something is really not working for you. And if you are planning on changing your schedule, make sure you incorporate that into your schedule so you don't spend all of your break time doing Anki like I did. But don't panic. It looks like a lot going into it. You're gonna look at your schedule and be like, how am I supposed to get through all of this in one day? Because that's exactly what I said. And you will do it and it will be easier than you think. Just take it one day at a time. So I hope this video was helpful for you and if you're preparing for step one, good luck. It's tough, it is a really hard journey, but you will get there and you will get through it and you will be a third year medical student on your rotations and it will be so much better. So you can get there, I'm rooting for you. And if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos for my actual experience with step one and studying for my classes and my third year rotation so far. So anyway, good luck on step one and thanks for watching.